While we're used to the idea of AI setting our timers for us or playing us our favorite tunes, not many of us know that it's also helping push agriculture to its cutting edge. The use of AI and robots in the agricultural industry, unbelievably, isn't only the need of the time, but also of the future, one where food insecurity looms large. Today, let's look at how they can help solve this problem and more. First thing Things first, it can create the perfect crop. One of the ways in which AI can reduce food insecurity is by helping scientists generate the perfect crop. Before you ask, the word perfect here implies that the crop should first be able to generate the highest yield, be the most nutritional, and can withstand different kinds of diseases and climatic conditions. We know what you're thinking. How does one factor AI into this? Well, Let's for a minute imagine a country that has at least 40 varieties of cereal. Now, to get AI to make the perfect crop, experts will need to feed the growth, genetic, and environmental data of all of these types into an AI model. The AI algorithms will then review the variables and identify patterns at a quicker rate to help locate the most breedable variety. Basically, these models can comprehend the complex genetics of plants. Let us give you a real-life example to help you better understand this process. As made up as it sounds, last year, researchers created a genetic model for the ultimate chickpea. This chickpea, from what we know, had the potential to lift crop yields by up to 12%. Yep, you heard that right. At the simplest, the team mapped thousands of chickpea varieties. This information was then used to identify the most valuable gene combinations using FastStack. Now, we're no experts, but from what we've understood, this platform combined AI with genomic prediction technology to make the ultimate genetics for maximum seed weight. We hope you've understood this point because it's time to move on to something even cooler. Moving on, it can help maximize the current output. In case you didn't know, these days, half of the world's food ends up in the trash. This this is mainly done to retain a particular quality. In circumstances like these, we can use AI-powered machines like Tamra sorting solutions. These machines help limit food waste by labeling different produce as good or bad. For example, it can easily evaluate a tomato to best determine its use. To elaborate, one kind of tomato might taste good in a salad, while another might be more useful to a ketchup company. Tenzo, for example, example is an automated AI forecasting platform that allows restaurants to make smarter, money-saving decisions by using sales patterns. This process also involves monitoring ingredient costs. Simply put, it determines which ones are being used the most and which ones might be going to waste. Up next, it can precisely apply herbicides. If you know a thing or two about farming, you might know that herbicides are responsible for both saving and destroying crops. Humans, we all know, can't easily distinguish between plants and weeds. In consequence, they use the spray and pray method for applying herbicides. Now, when it comes to AI, especially Blue River's lettuce bot, it can help reduce losses by 90%. Basically, since the bot has learned from more than a million images of 5,000 young plants, it only sprays weeds. Another AI AI method that can outright stop the use of herbicides, which, although they're useful, work to contaminate water and impact soil health, involves a farming robot armed with a laser. Yeah, we're not kidding. As if lifted right out of a science fiction story, this autonomous weeder uses its 12 cameras and carbon dioxide lasers to zap more than 100,000 weeds per hour. And get this, it weeds 15 to 20 acres of crops in one day. On top of that, it also helps cut weeding costs down by a whopping 80%. Humans could never do that. Coming up, it can showcase the warning signs of a crisis. Apart from autonomous weeders, scientists have also come up with a system that utilizes data and machine learning to help identify areas at increased risk of food shortages. This 
may be due to one of many factors, like droughts, rising food prices, and crop failure, called Nutrition Early Warning System, aka NEWS. It has already been deployed to warn farmers in Colombia of a drought that was on the horizon and suggest that they skip the planting season. Well, guess what? The 170 farmers that did end up heeding the system's advice to skip the planting season saved their planting costs because the drought did occur. Yeah, we know, it's almost like magic. Let's also talk about how it can improve plant health. You might have seen countless applications online that provide medical diagnoses and consultations. Believe it or not, deep learning AI is now being used to achieve something similar for plants. Although this project is still in the works, once it's fully developed, farmers around the world will be able to use such applications to diagnose their plants. This will allow them to take action before things become catastrophic. Following up, how it can become the Internet of Things for agriculture. Have you ever wondered why American farms are so productive? Well, we did a little digging and found out that they use sensors and systems that collect and analyze crop-related data. Now, if every country were to come with IoT devices like this, then by 2050, we'll have 4 million data points about everything from soil conditions to crop health and climate change. This type of data, for those of you who don't quite understand, will be powerful for deep learning AI and its ultimate application to make agriculture smarter and more efficient. What's more, the digital farm hand. So far, we've given you countless examples of AI systems and programs, but one innovation that we'd like to talk about in particular is the digital farm hand. Designed by Professor Salah Sukaraya, a robotics engineer at the University of Sydney's Australian Center for Field Robotics and his team, this small, autonomous, electric, tractor-like vehicle can assist smallholder farmers in improving their productivity and yields. Now, we repeat, we're no experts, but from listening to Professor Salah's speech at the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization's FAO Global Conference on Sustainable Plant Production in Rome, we've learned a few neat things about this little guy. To begin with, the farmhand is capable of towing a variety of implements like cedars, weeders, and bed preparation tools. To add to that, it can undertake precision automation of many labor-intensive farm tasks like weeding, spraying, and seeding. No, we're not finished yet. It turns out that it can also use accessible smartphone technologies along with AI to provide crop analytics such as yield estimation or pest and disease identification. Super cool, right? But hey, will this contraption be locally available? As per Professor Sukaraya, his team is working on building a localized, modular version of the digital farmhand. This localized version, as far as we know, will use materials that can be readily sourced within the Asia-Pacific region that the project is directed at. So instead of expensive parts, for instance, they'll instead be including electric slash petrol scooter parts to the contraption, making maintenance easier for native communities. Lastly, they're also developing open source artificial intelligence packages for smartphones that can be easily accessed in the region. Last but not least, the role of humanitarian organizations and challenges. Say what you will, but these innovations in the agricultural sector wouldn't have been possible without the aid of humanitarian organizations. A bunch of local farmers can't, in any way imaginable, make a single dent in the food crisis. That being said, let's take a look at some of the organizations that are helping curb world hunger and food insecurity. Let's begin with the United Nations World Food Program, WFP. As you guys might know, it has been funding and using a variety of innovative solutions like blockchain, drones, robotic technology, innovative financing, and new agribusiness models to tackle world hunger. That too, in more than 80 countries and among at least 115.5 million people. One of their programs that really caught our eye is the Voice to Text AI Sprint Program. At the simplest, this program 
program helps people to complete nutrition surveys remotely from their phones. Once that's done, it uses interactive voice response technology and speech recognition technology to get them in touch with respondents. If you think about it, this method is more efficient and less expensive than face-to-face -face and telephone surveying. To boot, the money that they save via this method can then be invested in their nutrition programs. Yet another way of encouraging more innovations in this sector, as well as making people more aware of such problems, is to hold more challenges, such as the Syngenta AI Challenge. For those of you who don't know, it's a contest that encourages programmers to use machine learning to improve agriculture. Give it a thought. Even if one or two innovations were coming to light via these competitions, by 2050, we'd have developed all the required solutions. That's a wrap for this video. What do you think? Are there any downsides to the use of AI in agriculture? If yes, can you think of some traditional ways to improve yields? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.